Right now, we we can uh, we can hear the talk of uh, Miriam Jessie. Miriam used to be a, a digital nomad, but uh, you know, 2025, 2020 was a difficult year. So she is currently uh, headquartered uh, on her sofa in Montreal, and uh, she has more than a decade of experience in SEO. And sometimes she likes nerding out uh, on performance optimization. So that's the case right now with a um, talk on CRS, one of the metric being part of the core web vitals introduced uh, last year by Google. So please welcome Miriam Jessier. Hello everyone. Well, this intro was a bit of a lie. Uh, I'm no longer in Montreal for now. I am in beautiful Saint-Jean-Port-Joli. And as you can hear, I have a bit of a French accent. So without further ado, let's jump into CLS, a new performance metric you have to know in 2021. CLS, what does it mean? What is it for? Why? <laughs> what? Well, we're going to be doing a deep dive into a new UX metric for developers. And you will see that the notion of UX, user experience, as it's defined by Google um, in the past and in the future with this, these new coming updates, is very different to what a user experience expert um, would talk about, would consider. So this is really a metric that has been put into dev terms. And I want to present how it's been thought about, how it's considered, what its impact is, and how you can avoid having it mess with your visibility online. So, bonjour, hi, as we say in Quebec. Um, I'm Miriam, and you can find me on Twitter at Miriam Gessier. Uh, Augustin and I, well, Augustin is the other person in the picture, we own our boutique search experience agency in Montreal. So by boutique, it's, we mean we're only two. We have a lot of experience and we have a lot of fun thinking about the search experience. What happens to you when you put some words in the search bar and results happen? What is the adventure that will lead a user to a website? So this was the shortest sales pitch ever from a marketer, enjoy it. Now let's dig in. There are some major new ranking things happening. Well, Core Web Vitals is by itself one of the big factors that will be considered by Google in 2021 when it comes to load time. But it's actually a cluster of three metrics. So I'm going to be presenting them and then we will zoom in to the CLS one, the one that we're interested in today. Google has a new updated ranking algorithm. They've been making some big, big, big changes. When will these big changes happen? Well, when they first announced these core web vitals, the answer was eh, somewhere in 2021. The reason why, well, a global pandemic happened. So the rollout was supposed to be in 2020, Turns out nothing went according to plan. So now the rollout is planned for May, 2021. This leads you a few months to get on the bandwagon. Why does it leave you this little time? Well, UX is more important than ever for Google, ever. The reason why is <laughs> marketers are not spending the big bucks in ads. This stuff better work. Otherwise we're not spending money. So. Now everybody cares about user experience and how users feel because they are potential clients. So how do we consider UX when it comes to search engines? Well, that's a big question. That's something that Google started thinking about quite a few years ago with page rank experience. This is used to measure pages based on their UX criteria. So with PRE, Google aims to rank websites that are serving accessible and usable content. They're also aiming, amongst other things, this year to combat fake news, to actually develop their ability to read images, and the brand new thing they're talking about is 
you upload your website and they give you videos based on your website. So YouTube is getting a lot of love too. It's not just performance when it comes to websites load time. Google has invested a lot to improve user experience across their products. So ultimately, if Google thinks that users are having a poor experience on your website, your rankings will suffer. And why should you care about this? Well, it's nice to be number one in Google, but ultimately it's all about visibility. If you are not in search results, but your competitors are, that's going to be a big problem for the bottom line. And that problem, according to Google, falls squarely on the shoulders of technical marketers like me, but also developers like you. So let's figure this out. If we look at page rank experience as a whole, well, it, it really accounts for all the search signals that are considered by Google when it comes to page experience. So let's break them down. Your page has to be mobile friendly. Browsing must be safe. You must have an SSL certificate and no intrusive interstitials. I love that one because nobody actually knows what it means. Let me simplify it. No intrusive, aka no annoying pop-ups on mobile. That's about it. What it comes down to is your pop-ups should be 15% or less than the mobile screen size. So now that you know this, or now that you're going to pretend you knew this all along, let's look at the new stuff. Google cares about loading, interactivity, visual stability. And the company has given names to these metrics, the way they look at them. So Google already uses many existing factors. I've listed them. They have some penalties. I mean, they will downgrade you or remove you from results if you don't follow the rules. So this is something you should care about. Mobile friendliness, all of your pages should be mobile friendly, all of them. You can check that with a mobile friendliness test. You literally type into Google mobile friendly test. You will find it, it will load up in the results. Safe browsing, so no malicious or deceptive content. This is very, very complicated. Why? Well, it's not always you. A lot of websites are getting hacked, so people can redirect them, hackers can redirect them to fake websites or to cheap Viagra. So this is important because it's literally how I met uh, one of my very good friends presenting in this conference. She had issues like this and they were made to not be seen, just shown to Google. So be very careful about that. And you can check that in the security issues report in Google Search Console. It's a free tool that's really nice to check your core web vitals, your keywords, but you don't really care about that bit, and security issues. So HTTPS, simple, clear. It used to be actually a ranking factor SEOs really cared about, even though it's tiny. Now it's just a basic. Make sure that your site's connection is secure and no pop-ups. The content of the pages, specifically on mobile, should be easily accessible to the user. So now that you know the basics of PRE, let's talk about the three pillars of Core Web Vitals. The largest contentful paint, or LCP, as you've seen it most likely in the Google PageSpeed Insight report, well, that one is about PageSpeed purely. How fast does your website load? Now, cumulative layout shift, or CLS, is basically Google asking, how visually stable is your website? Now, that's Google's question. For you, if you have ever landed on a page, click the button, and at the last second it shifts and you hit something else, yeah, CLS cares about that. There is now a number on your pane. And then there is interactivity, FID, first input delay. How quick are your interactivity features? When the user clicks something, how long does your site take to process and give back a result? So these are questions that are asked now in 2021. But for us today, all about CLS. CLS measures visual stability. What does that mean? Well, let me show you first and foremost. Just let's look at it. So you see this animated GIF on the left. It is an analysis of the mobile version of a website. And you can see at the top, the CLS score is 0 0.387. Now, there's a lot of red. 
There's a lot of menacing red shapes shifting. Aim for a CLS score below 0.1 if you want to be safe. I'm giving you that information and I will give it again because that's what you came here for. That's what you want to know is the score. Tell me what I have to pass, what's the grade? So if you want to know how your pages are performing, head on over to Google Search Console and you will see on the left pane, there is a Core Web Vitals report available. It will tell you if all of your URLs are good according to Google or if they need improvement. So be careful. All the URLs in the index, Google has to find your pages to be able to actually record that number. So if you, if you don't have a live website, you're not going to be able to use this report. So to investigate, you can use two tools right off the bat to know how bad it is according to Google. Search Console, but also the Page Speed Insight tools. You will see that these metrics come out and there is a score when you do the test. There are some other tools. They're not necessarily 100% uh, Google made, but they're based on what Google offers. So you can see your CLS score in the metric summary at the top of your Lighthouse audit, if you know uh, how to use that. You can also go to the Chrome user experience report. So the CRUX. This one, it's a bit tricky because it's not available to everyone. So I'm just warning you. And then for more granular data, there's actually a JavaScript API in Chromium. You can calculate rates like the layout shifts per minute. And the one I like the best, it's the, the GIF I generated. It's made with a tool that's made by Defaced. So it's a developer who actually cares about SEO and he's a really nice person. So check out his tools. They're very useful. Why is CLS coming on? Well, because everyone wins according to Google. They have commissioned studies that have shown that almost a quarter of visitors will bounce if a website does not meet core Web Vitals requirements. And that one is a bit tricky because I mean bounce as in I'm coming in. Mm -mm, this is a mess. I'm leaving. I back button, back button, a savage back button. Except that in marketing, we have this metric called bounce rate, which is a bit unusual because it counts if the person came only on one page and left. So the person could have stayed a long time and left, you know, like the contact page or the reading an entire guide on visiting Japan. Well, this counts as a bounce rate. So be careful when I say bounce, I meant just heading out in disgust, not messing with your website. Another little thing that is coming on thanks to web um, core web vitals is that um, AMP or AMP or well, Yes, I don't like that format. So personally, I'm very relieved to see that. But AMP won't be the criteria to be featured in top stories any longer. So Google has developed this new format called Web Stories that enables you to show up a bit at the top with news, etc. But it's no longer relying on AMP. So what they're basically saying is AMP was nice, but there's some other metrics you have to look at. You don't necessarily need that code if you can prove to us that your website is performing well according the, to these three metrics. So why CLS? Why cumulative layout shift? Because unexpected content shifts suck. They just suck. And Google decided to create a metric to measure how much they suck. So that's my opinion. Now we can talk about the, the official opinion. It's, um, uh, they call it officially, we are seeking to measure layout instability. Yes, no, I, basically it's a user experience metric that focuses on UX beyond performance. So what I used to hate as a specialist is your website is slow. Yeah, I know I told my developer, but he told me that it loads just fine on his machine. Yeah, but it's still slow. Like I can't do my job because I can't audit your website because it's slow. Let me count the ways. Let me show you how slow it is. And usually we get told, well, there's not much we can do about this. Now there is. If we explain that, okay, this is a problem. Your ads or your choice marketing team or branding team, they're not going to be compatible with a good experience. Well, it, it's room for negotiation. So we need to discuss this together as marketing specialists that try to load a lot of stuff on websites, but also developers that are fighting to have a website that loads properly with the requirements. Sometimes it may mean giving up some things or changing the way you code some stuff. 
So what is a good score? What is a good CLS score? Once again, it's 0 0.1, but you're not graded on an absolute. Google is ensuring that most of the users have a good experience by checking out the neighborhood. So they're measuring the 75th percentile of a page load, okay? It's segmented across mobile and desktop devices. This is not something where it's an absolute that you have to meet, but it's just based on what is out there on the web that is considered a good experience. So how is it measured? That one took me a while. So first, the specialist looked at how much of the area on the screen is affected. That's called the impact region. The impact region you saw was the animated GIF from the website, like all the stuff moving. So they look at DOM elements that shifted from one animation frame to the next, to the next, to the next. Hence the name, cumulative. It adds up. Usually ads are the ones that mess us up. I mean, seriously, usually the ads are the ones that take forever to load and it's just, ugh. but ads are not considered as a shifted element because Google doesn't want to penalize new elements because it's a common thing that happens um, during progressive rendering. Yes, yes, yes. It's also a common thing that happens with their own ads because they make their money first and foremost with ads. So these metrics are the pure user experience. Yes and no, they're pure user experience from the standpoint of an ad man and a technical man put together that create a search engine that's almost a monopoly. So be careful if your UX specialist is bristling at this have a talk with them, figure out a common ground, okay? It's important to ensure that you actually have a good experience on your website and not just a good score. So if there are many shifted elements in the same animation frame, or if the elements move all over, so that can be horizontally and vertically, you can end up with multiple impact zones. That's what we saw, multiple rectangles just riding each other and moving all over the place. Nothing about this metric is neat and precise. It's a bit messy. The point is to measure the mess. So how do we set about this? We have our impact area, but there's more metrics. There's more things that are taken into account. The impact fraction and the distance fraction. So we look at the impact region, but compared to the viewport. So you provide a normalization across the different device sizes, but also the window sizes. So you look at a ratio called the impact fraction, that's the impact region to the viewport. But if something moves a lot, that's super distracting. So you are going to get a really bad grade. What if something moves a little, but over many frames? Well, it's also a problem. So we're looking at two elements because there's a maximum move distance for each frame that is determined. And if you go beyond that, that's considered and it, it accumulates. But there's also the question of if there's one big shift, it's also measured and graded. So you need to take this into account to end up with a score. So that score is the impact fraction by the distance fraction. So how far did it move? And you get a score for animation frame. So it's per frame, as you can see on the bottom left. We start with multiple frames and you can see that we find back the first contentful paint. We find back the LCP. So we have some metrics that are shown in the page speed insight report and we can physically see, you can see that the green element that says décalage de mise en page cumulatif aka cumulative layout score, but in French, is passing for this test. It's good. It works for them. Is the experience great for the rest of the metrics? No, but this one passed. So you can also have a website that doesn't offer a great experience, is super slow to load, but doesn't move much. So you're home free with CLS. So you have to know when to focus on this. Test it out. If this is a problem, take it into account. If it's not, be safe. That's good. Common issues that you will encounter are a bit um, expected. So I try to list the most common ones. Number one is 
the rendering in the page can change asynchronously in response to user input. So Google solution is you have an input um, window, like you have a little input window. So your shifts will get ignored within half a second of the input. So if somebody pushes a button, that half a second is home free for you. Things can move. There's another problem. If you animate uh, a layout related property with CSS, like um, position offsets, you will have an issue with Google because ugh, the browser's layout engine will have to rerun on every single animation frame. Remember the cumulative? That score can get really big. Even if it's a tiny move that occurs on every single frame, it gets added up. So the solution is to give you a pass on the transform property. Transform doesn't influence the surrounding layout. As long as, for example, your carousel is built with that, you will have a CLS score that is safe. You won't have issues. And as a bonus, the transform property also allows you to be more efficient even if your page is script heavy, which often happens when you work with, you know, marketers that keep wanting to add functionalities or cute things or marketing tracking stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So full disclosure, most of the time in performance, I end up by telling my clients, I know the culprit is Google and it's actually highlighted. Google is asking you to make their own services faster and you can't. So this is what I mean by if you're stuck with a script heavy page, consider transform. How can you debug in DevTools? I've shown you quite a few tools, but this one is actually pretty neat. And I don't think many people know about this. If you go to your menu in DevTools, you go to more tools and then to rendering, you will find layout shift regions. And so the content that shifted will be highlighted in blue. It's easy. It's not red and green like mine, but it's blue. So ultimately, whether it be green, red, blue, depending on what you need, you need to be able to see these shifts. That is the most important portion for debugging. You cannot debug what you don't see. This is all about, you know, what happens from each frame to the next. So what are the most common issues that you will face beyond the big three? Unsized images. Oh my goodness. Please add a size attribute or reserve the required space with a CSS aspect ratio. This will save, uh, Experiences, not lives. Slow loading fonts. Remember? Yeah. So on slow connections, text can load before the font. And you know what this looks like because it's the, the flash of unstyled text that's a bit messy. And you're, you're stuck there frozen going, what's going on as a user if you don't know what's going on? If you know what's going on, you're just frustrated. So consider font display optional or consider a font style matching tool for your fallback font. So there's a little link because I'm not a designer and I need to make some choices that uh, are better <laughs> suited for this tool. So it really helps me out. Injected content after the page was loaded. So for this piece of advice, reserve space for the large and late loaded promos. And for the small promo bars, you can also go with position fixed or you can reserve a space for both. Um, so flash of unstyled content, same. Ensure CSS is loaded before content. And animations that trigger layout changes. That one is a bit tricky. Use the transform property, as we said, instead of properties that cause a layout shift. So you will have to check CSS triggers for a list that, you know, can cause issues. I'm not a specialist in terms of CSS, but it's really easy to identify. If you want to know more, um, I highly recommend Annie and Steve's talk. It's in English, so that's great. And um, they really dug into why they made these choices, what they talked about. And they even say, hey, if you want to give some feedback, here is the URL, uh, the email for the team. Speedmetricsdev at chromium.org. Okay, there's a few dashes in there, but you can see it on the screen. Uh, so if you want to send them some feedback, Go ahead. If you have some questions, though, I recommend checking the documentation first and foremost. This is not an email for customer service. So thank you very much for listening to me, or as we say here, merci beaucoup. <laughs>
Okay, so let's go for a round of questions. Some of them are from the French, uh, the French talk that we have um, translated. So the first one is uh, just right after the recording of your talk, a blog post put and, uh, on a potential change about the way we compute uh, CLS. Does it change something on what we've just heard? Well, it does and it doesn't. From a technical standpoint, it doesn't. The end game is still to make sure that your website is visually stable. Now, the problematic, as I said, was that um, initially when we think about performance, you're thinking about it in terms of a scientific laboratory. You can test these things in an ideal environment, kind of like a medical study. Except that, just like for medical studies, the meds that you develop are used by people that have other issues, so called comorbidities. So, for example, if you have a medication that is supposed to help fix heart issues, but you also have cholesterol, it may not work well. Same thing for CLS. It's visual stability is very unusual because it's hard to capture, it's hard to understand, it goes through time frame to frame. So, um, Annie's team basically posted, I think, maybe two days before this, asking people to provide feedback on how CLS is measured, how we think about it, because that is still up for debate. These are very new metrics and they're going to be rolled out in May. So now is the time to actually give feedback if you want. Okay, thank you. So next question from, uh, from Boris. Uh, Boris is asking, uh, the core web vitals are often presented as being at the same level of importance in Google materials. Do you consider them to be equally important? So, I love this question. It's super important. <laughs> it's very important. And I love the fact that it says, do you consider them? So I'm speaking in my name with my experience and I'm not representing Google. I'm not representing WordPress, Shopify, anybody, okay? So um, the reality for me, and I think a few other people that I exchange with in regards to these metrics is, most of us are really worried about largest contentful paint because it is one of the big ones and if things are not delivered it really does impact a lot of things when it comes to cls i'm i have read a lot of things i have also tested a few things myself but you know it's not rolled out in for google yet so you have to understand i don't have tangible information that would prove to me that these metrics one of them is more important than the other because for my profession, we don't know yet, we will see. However, let's be realistic here. So now that I have done the disclaimers, um, yes, CLS is actually one of the least important ones. It is, I hate to say it, but it is. And even in the way it's documented, you can kind of glimpse a bit of that. You can tell that, hey, well, yeah, it has to be visual stable, but if interaction happens, we're giving you this window because otherwise it would be unfair. And it's also, well, we know that the, the websites, well, the web loads progressively. So we know that <clears throat> banners can come in at any time. And, you know, we need to make space for that because this is how we pay for everything on the web, which is true. Ultimately, I have to admit it is true, but it still sucks. It is still a reality. So personally, would I give more emphasis as an SEO uh, to other metrics such as interactivity or uh, you know performance like largest contentful paint how fast does it load yes would I deeply care about visual stability yes because we have shown in marketing that it can make you lose money but I would investigate and show okay to each client what is the biggest problem you have right now out of these three metrics Okay, thanks. Uh, another question from uh, Alexa. Uh, if an element blinks, but without moving anything vertically or, or horizontally, would it impact CRS? So this one, is, this one is a tricky one and I will actually have to look into it and ask the team about it because I, this is my hypothesis and it does make a lot of sense. But once again, until it's documented, this is up in the air. Um, Google has made it very clear 
when something shifts, so moves and causes the other elements in the DOM to shift, okay? So if the environment is moving because you have a Houdini that keeps blinking in and out, you know, appearing, disappearing like a magician, does it appear and disappear without causing any issues to the surrounding area or does it cause issues? And then this gets picked up by Google, you know, seeing the impact area. We see this move. We see that, you know, the impact area is not a beautiful square. It can actually be multiple spots. Okay. It can look like a bit of a mess, actually, if you have problems, very big problems. So if that element blinks and causes these issues, it will get, it will get picked up. So you have to do it in a way that doesn't trigger changes like this. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, maybe the last uh, question from Boris again. Uh, according to you, outside of CLS, what is a good metric? This is the problem. It depends on what the situation is, huh? right? But if we look at it, if we consider CLS for what it is, and in that case is how visually stable is your website? I would look first and foremost to the pain points. Are people coming onto the website specifically? I'm, I'm going to say this because it's super important on mobile. When you go on desktop, there's there's some situations where I literally have had to go request desktop website because what I saw was not navigable. I cried like no. And it it's it's something that if on mobile you see in your stats that people are can I use curse words here or no? Yes. If you are just coming onto your website and fucking run off, <laughs> that is a problem. That says I cannot use this where I don't want to. This is the biggest metric for me. Are we losing people? Are we losing money? And is the problem us? Often it is. Especially think about e-commerce websites. Oh my God. Or think about blogs that have decided to monetize purely with ads. It's bonkers. They move, they follow you, they do all this. Like it's it's almost like they're haunting you like a ghost and there's no escaping it. So this is my good metric. If I load up that website and you know it confirms that, oh yeah, CLS score is is really bad, and then I load it up and I know why, that's my metric. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. It was, that was the, the last question. So um, thank you very much, Miriam, for uh, both uh, both talks uh, in French and in English and the time you, you spent with us. So um, thank you very much and goodbye. No problem. And Have a great day. You too. And then,